we're gonna be talking about your mindset and how to get better. Personal De Development 101. How's it going? I'm Charles Bodenston, based in New York City. We're gonna be doing podcasts twice a week, so stick with me as we delve into the thoughts of my brain after reading a thousand books or more and upwards of $250,000 worth of personal development. I'm back. So welcome to the channel. Let's get right into it. Energy is something that I've been thinking about a lot. Uh, what is the energy? What is the enthusiasm? What is the positivity? What is your thought process? Are you running on all cylinders? I've, the last, say, three and a half years have not been ideal. I've, I will talk about the struggles I've gone through. My afternoons were terrible. My mornings, I was on fire. I would arrive at 8.40, I'd practice, I'd role play for scripts, I'd get onto sales calls at nine, go to 11, maybe go on two to three appointments, and then get lunch at like one to two, and then I crashed. I had no energy. Why? Why do I enter an appointment potentially with another agent, and that agent is on? Or I get on a call, a group call with a client, an attorney, a board member, it's 3.30, and someone is just on. They're bringing it, they're bringing the heat, they got the energy, they got the positivity, and I'm standing there thinking like, what is this guy, how does this person have this at 3.30? I'm exhausted, I don't wanna be on this call, what's going on? So I started maximizing for my energy. When you seriously look at your energy, it is something that will take months. Because you have to say, oh, I had a big, say, hero that brought my, my energy down. Or I had too much coffee and now I'm um, crashing. Let's get off the coffee. Or I had all this sugar during lunch. Don't have as much sugar. I didn't exercise in the, in the morning and now I'm crashing. Like, it's going to take a while to get there. And I'll get into a, a couple of areas that I wrote down to maximize your life for energy. All right? Number one is... What natural, natural methods will give you energy? Number one, exercise. Number two is healthy food. Number three is sleep. Number four is water. With a touch of salt, by the way, it's better. Laughter, okay, positivity, personal development. What drains you of that? Social media, carbs, unhealthy carbs, okay? Big lunches, a huge breakfast. Okay, lots of coffee, bad sleep, no exercise, okay? Terrible environment, bad music, okay? This all affects you, all right? And I say natural, and the reason being is forever, we were fine. And now we have devices all over the place. I'm surrounded by Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and lights and cameras and oh my. And what I noticed is that it is 1.40 p.m., I haven't had anything to eat at all today. I didn't even exercise this morning. It's a Friday. I went on uh, two really long appointments, an hour or 40 minutes for one, hour and a half for the other. We prospected in the morning and I did an hour and a half of work before I even came to work. And I've been eating all day and I'm on fire right now. Fasting is the biggest thing that you have to put into your life. I never have breakfast. And the reason being, in the beginning, you're gonna, your body's gonna crave it because the neurons in your brain are gonna say, this is what we want. And your stomach is gonna be growling and say, no, give me Fruit Loops, give me, give me oatmeal, give me something. And once you actually get past that and you start making it to lunch and then you start consistently doing that, I don't even think about breakfast. I, it, it puts me in a low energy mood and fasting in general makes your body repair. So if you had a bad night's sleep, you need your body to repair or if you drank the night before, which I'm no uh, stranger to alcohol, which has been my crux for the last three and a half years, which I'll talk about at another time. But fasting repairs the body. It gives you energy. It's the greatest thing that nobody's talking about. Disease, all these things that would normally come ac across your body. Your body is developing food, so go and fast. Number two that we're gonna be talking about today is when you're taking action, okay, you have the right to the action, but you don't have the right to the outcome. So people say, well, I made sales calls, I should have appointments, or I went to the gym, I should be in shape, or I asked this girl out, I should be in a relationship. You have the fruit to potentially get the outcome, 
but you definitely have the fruit to take the action. So in other words, you don't deserve the outcome. How many people think they deserve the outcome today? No, if they take the action, even worse, even worse in society are the people who actually think just because just they exist, they're entitled to the fruit without even any action. I, I'm entitled to be in shape. I'm entitled to be in a relationship. I'm entitled to have the greatest person in my life that compliments me on all levels while I do nothing. That is permeating TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, where people are like, oh, where do I get this? Do I buy this body? Come on, all right? If you believe you deserve the future just because you took action, that is a disease of entitlement. Entitlement is the worst thing you can have in any personal development, period, okay? Entitlement gets you nowhere, okay? You are essentially trying to control the outcome without the action, all right? Don't think that everything you do is amazing. It's only small, consistent, handful of things that you do that will move the needle forward. That's a mic drop, mouth drop. First of all, don't, like, come on. You're gonna start going to the gym and you're thinking you're gonna be amazing. You start making sales calls. You start in a relationship. You think it's gonna be amazing all the time. However, it is the small, consistent, small handful of things that move the, move the needle forward. It is the 10% out of the 100%. Okay, too many people are focusing on the 90% because that's easy. The 10% is challenging, it's hard to do. That's why nobody focuses on it. And when you actually do the 10%, you get noticed as one of the top 10%, ironically enough. Moving on, growth is a choice we make. Okay, I'll hold back. However, when people say that I'm finding myself, you know, I need time to just, you know, really get to know myself. I just want to ask the question, like, how are you doing? Like, what are you doing? What are the steps? Are you actually going to read a book about the area you want to get better in? So when you're trying to find yourself, what does that mean? Heal from past trauma. It could be getting over, say, drug addiction or pornography or gaming or gambling or bad relationships or the same people I keep on dating that you're choosing, by the way. So if you're finding yourself, you need to find yourself in a book, or in therapy, or with a counselor, or with a mentor, or with someone to, to hold you accountable, okay? Find yourself an accountability partner, or a personal trainer, okay? A lot of people are just trying to actually just get by in life, by doing nothing and trying to find themselves and having things change, growth is a choice. It is a constant, never-ending decision that you make. It's growth to not snooze your alarm and go to the gym or snooze your alarm and stay in bed and then go on your phone and scroll through TikTok and make someone else richer while you are finding yourself in your bed, not going to the gym, okay? For me, one of the biggest things that I'm kind of cutting out in the future, at least for the next month and a half is gonna be caffeine. And what I've heard is that an hour after waking up, you should not be having caffeine. And I have a shot of espresso from Nespresso when I wake up and I've heard it's not ideal for the body. The body needs to acclimate to be getting ready for me going to the gym, okay? Moving on, let's go. We're on a roll. We only have a couple more bullet points. No one is coming to save you. And on top of that, and I'll say this in future podcasts, is that Nobody cares about your outcome more than you. Nobody cares about the outcome. Nobody cares about your outcome more than you. They might care, but they don't care more than you. Get that through your head. Are we still trying to look for the government solutions? Have we not learned anything? They want to create problems. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my gosh. If anyone looks at the government still, oh boy, I got a, I got a piece of land in the Everglades to sell you. Moving on to that, on top of that, where I was saying, if you, everyone's heard it, you know, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail. So you need to be taking full accountability for all of the actions that you're taking, not the outcome, but the actions. 
You can't control when you get into shape. You can't control if they're gonna take your deal if you make sales calls. You can't control if you get the job or they wanna go out with you or they wanna go on a second date with you or your parents are who they are, your friends are who they are, where you live. Can't control it. Control what you can control, okay? And take full accountability for all of the action. You snooze the alarm. You didn't get out of bed. You're the one that put that food in your mouth. You're the one that's watching Bravo TV. You're the one that's watching other people stream online. Okay, that's, that's a whole podcast in of itself. All these people that are watching other people stream for hours a day is wild. That is wild to me. There is people, hundred and something thousand people will be watching one person streaming. What are you doing? Especially if you're a guy, what are you doing? You're sitting there and you're like, Dude, cut that out. Stop, come on, grow up. It's embarrassing. All right. Four more bullet points. Our job is to lead ourselves for first. Inspiration and demonstration is the best formation of leadership. If you want your relationship to be better, you must change and be better. If you want yourself in your job to be better, you must change and be better. If you want your friend group to be better, you must change and become better. Simple. If you want new friends, you have to get better yourself and then attract the friends. Okay, better friends are not, if you're not in shape, you're not gonna just get this running group coming to you and saying, let's all go running. No, running groups hang out with running groups. Losers hang out with losers. Gamers hang, hang out with gamers. People who stream hang out with streamers. People who watch streams hang out with people who watch streams. Okay, so your job is to lead yourself. No one's leading you, all right? Happiness, this is a very important point. Happiness happens on the way to fulfillment. It is not the prerequisite. Happiness happens on the way to fulfillment. No one cares about your outcomes more than you, which I talked about. I included your colleagues, you know, your spouse, your bank account, your mind, your job, all of these things. You must have a growth mindset over a fixed mindset. And this is the last thing I'll leave you with on today's podcast is you can either choose to be somebody or choose to be anybody. You can't be both. You can either choose to be somebody, in other words, someone different, someone who doesn't follow the crowd, who is okay with people not liking them and not agreeing with their positions and not agreeing with their choices and not being on the same path, to be part of the 10%, that means you have to go against 90%. If you wanna be part of the 1%, you have to be totally different than the 99%, or else the 99% would be the 1%, which makes nobody the 1%. That's very crucial to hear, because everybody wants followers and subscribers and money and to be different and a brand and a website and all these people they they come in and they buy my ebook and my e-course and all this other nonsense but are you different what value are you bringing to the marketplace what value are you even bringing to yourself and as a bonus this just came to my mind is all of these people online who are totally different offline okay for all the people that pay for online courses and e-courses, I'm guilty of sin. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on people that I was like, wow, that was terrible. That was a really bad e-course. But I spent the money and I got one or two things. And I said, all right, not a big deal. But I made a pact with myself. There's two things that I said to myself. Number one, if I ever sold anything online, so it might be in the future, I have no idea. I'm not gonna say no in 10 years, five years, whatever. I'm never gonna be that person that sells a $40 product, a $100 product, a $1,000 product, and it's really worth, who said? Worthless. You scam them. I was scammed dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. I'm probably gonna be scammed dozens of times in the future. So I said, if I'm gonna be doing that, I am never going to give less value, not even close, two to three times. But the second one, which is even more important to me, is to decipher who is authentic to the message in which they are actually portraying. It is the personal trainer who is not even in shape themselves. It is the person who's peddling keto, but is not even in 
ketosis themselves. It is the financial advisor who's in debt. It is the insurance broker who doesn't even have life insurance themselves. Do you believe in your product? You can't say that you're into health and a personal trainer if you're not actually doing it. So it's all these people online that are saying, well, get my ebook or my e-course or buy my book or buy my, are you doing it yourself? Or are you making money from me who's actually buying your stuff? This is the first podcast back, share it. Send it to people around. I know everybody in the beginning was like, oh, he's gonna get on the Jesus train and the guy train. That might be in the future. That's who I am now. However, the personal development is at my heart. I'm always looking to get better. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It was great to be back. I am on fire. I am fasting. I might get a meal. I might not get a meal. I might go 24 hours. Personally, I don't really care. My body doesn't care. It's, it's thanking me because I'm not shoving more salad down my body. But for you guys, listen, you have to, as I started this podcast, maximize your energy. Everything about your life is who do you hang out with? What do you put in your body? What are you visually putting into your eye sockets or hearing? Is it is it what I used to listen to, which was like metal? It was Slipknot and all disturbed. Metallica, Power Man 5000, Linkin Park. But when I left there, the words after a while, I forgot what, uh, man, it's, it's eluding me, the song. They're from Albania or Estonia or something like that. And it's, it's killing me. I started listening to the lyrics. I don't listen to that music anymore, okay? I'm listening to beautiful music that's uplifting. You're not gonna like the music I listen to. But then it's also, who do I hang out with? Where do I put my attention? When I'm on my phone, do I actually scroll through social media or am I actually posting? When I'm on my phone, am I actually just doing that because I'm bored? Or because I'm actually doing something productive? So this is the best way to do it. I started doing this about six years ago. You get into an elevator, and in New York City, there's elevators all over the place, and you sit there. You don't go on your phone, you don't look around, you sit in uncomfortableness, and you continue to sit there, and after a while, you actually train your brain to enjoy silence. This is the thing. You can tell who's anxious or who needs that stimulation, they need that dopamine hit, by the doors close for the elevator and they're immediately on their phone. And all they do is just open it. That's how addicted, okay? So what are your addictions? I'm gonna go over it personally in my life. I was addicted to alcohol. And not a lot of people know that. Now the internet knows that, not a big deal. I told a lot of people in my life right now. However, it's one of those things that it's part of my story and I want other people to get away from their addictions. There's a lot, there's gambling, there's pornography, there's food, there's sugar, there's Bravo, there's, the reason I'm saying Bravo or Bachelor or any of these shows, or streaming, social media in general, just being addicted, drama, negativity, complaining. Like, what are you addicted to? What is, what is your vice? When you get closer to God, you understand that all of that is disgusting. It's unclean stuff. It's like you're watching someone else get rich and you're just sitting there in gluttony and, and, and laziness and watching football all day. I'm, I'm from, oh, mind dude. It's not attractive to your wife. Leave your comments below. It's great to be back. I'm going to be coming back probably every Friday and Monday with a podcast. And then I'm going to do shorts in between. That's going to be on TikTok and on Instagram. But I'm going to be coming back with a vengeance. It's been three and a half years. Built up crazy amount of education and knowledge from the rabbit hole that I'm going to be bringing to you, the internet audience. Have a great day. Subscribe, send it to others, and I will talk to you soon.